Visiting another country has its own set of rules and etiquette to be followed, and Japan is no exception. From paying for everyday items to ordering in a restaurant, knowing what to do can make or break a trip. Remember these 10 tips to ensure your trip to Japan is memorable and snag free. Welcome to our channel, where we talk about all the beautiful places around the world and tips on making your travel experience better. If you're new here, we're glad you found us. And if you're a subscriber, thank you for joining us again. Without any further ado, let's head straight into the countdown. Number one, buy a Japan Rail Pass. No visit to Japan is complete without taking the Shikansen at least once. Japan's very efficient bullet train is an experience, and you'd be silly not to include that in your journey. So why not buy a JR Rail Pass? A Shinkansen Super Express ticket can be quite expensive. For example, a Tokyo to Kyoto ticket could cost up to 13,320 yen, or about $93 at the time of this video, out of pocket. Reserving a specific seat is an extra charge. Sure, you could do small, quick jaunts on the Shikansen just to say you've taken it, but nothing replaces the experience of watching the Japanese countryside whiz by at 160 miles per hour. The JR Rail Pass solves this problem by giving unlimited Shikansen rides for 7, 14, or 21 days, except on the fastest Nozomi and Mizuho trains. It also lets you take the Narita Express or the Tokyo Monorail for free, and is eligible for use on any JR operated trains and buses. The cost might seem high initially, around $300 for a 7 day pass but it will quickly pay for itself after two or three long-distance Shikansen rides. Number two, use a credit card with no international transaction fees. You could argue that this tip applies to any country you visit, and you're right. Using a debit or credit card with no international transaction fees will save you a lot of money during your trip. This is especially important in Japan, where cash is still heavily preferred in most stores. Even if you don't plan to swipe a card every time you make a transaction, you'll still need it. You can withdraw cash from any ATM. Most banks already charge a currency conversion fee and sometimes a withdrawal fee. So why not save the foreign transaction fee for yourself? If you're traveling on a budget, every little bit of savings helps. Number three, cash is king. As we mentioned earlier, most vendors in Japan still prefer cash over credit cards. This is even more apparent the further away you go from the city center. Save yourself the trouble and embarrassment by carrying cash everywhere you go. That way, you're sure to get whatever you're trying to buy. Of course, this tip won't help if you don't know what the yen notes and coins look like. Though Japanese money is universally friendly with its markings, meaning you don't need to know how to read Japanese to recognize it, there's nothing more embarrassing than holding up an entire line as you try to decipher which coin is which. Take a few minutes to learn what the yen coins look like so you can pay for your items without a hitch. Number four, carry a coin holder. The main reason why you need to familiarize yourself with the yen coins is that you'll be carrying a lot of them. And we don't mean just a fistful either. We're talking about an unreasonable amount of coins to fit in your pocket especially the one yen coins. Why do the Japanese use coins so much? You can take the existence of their 500 yen coin, which is equivalent to about $3.42. That 500 yen coin is worth a lot. It could buy you a full meal at Yoshinoya and probably let you take the bus back to your lodging too. If not, the leftover change will definitely get you a drink from the vending machine. As you break down the larger notes, you'll keep getting more and more coins as change. Make sure you have a dedicated pouch for them so you can leave your pockets empty for other essential things. It even wouldn't hurt to have a bag dedicated to just one yen coin. It'll save you time from having to sort through a bunch of them. Number five, get an IC card. IC cards are reloadable prepaid cards that you can use to pay for your train or bus fare. You could also use it in vending machines, convenience stores, or any store that accepts IC card payments. And the best thing is that you can use the card nationwide, regardless of where you initially activated it. 
you can keep using it throughout the years so that the same card can help you again on another visit. Feeling thirsty while walking around? Find the nearest vending machine and pay for a cold, refreshing drink with your IC card. Now how's that for convenience? This means no more fiddling about with coins and notes when trying to pay for a few pieces of onigiri from Family Mart. Simply scan your IC card and you'll be on your way. And as a bonus, there are limited edition IC cards, depending on the time of year. If you're lucky enough to get one, make sure you do. They're collectible and will make your IC card look unique as you use it on your daily travels. Number six, rent a mobile Wi-Fi router. Here's another tip that could technically apply regardless of what country you're visiting. Mobile Wi-Fi routers help maintain internet connectivity without draining your plan's data. They're not that expensive and usually offer unlimited data for around $6.85 per day. If you rent one with limited data, you won't completely lose the connection. You'll simply get throttled to lower speeds. You'll hear other people recommending a data-only SIM card instead of a mobile Wi-Fi router, and that's fine. That's a better option for those who have dual SIM capabilities on their devices. But a mobile Wi-Fi router is a better choice if you have a phone that can't support dual SIM cards, as most American phones are. Curious how you can get one? The best deals are available for those who book a rental ahead of time. You can opt to receive the router at the airport once you arrive or have it mailed to your hotel. All the instructions will be there for you to ensure smooth usage. When you're done at the end of your trip, simply put the mobile router in the prepaid packaging they've provided and drop it off at any mailbox. Number seven, know your closest convenience store. Convenience stores are everywhere in Japan, but they can be tricky to find if you don't know beforehand where they are. Most of them are open either 24 hours a day or until late, which makes them useful if you're suffering from jet lag. They also sell inexpensive breakfast items that can nourish you in the mornings, especially during a rush. And if you're lucky enough to have a 7-Eleven near you, almost all locations have cash machines. Taking cash for your next remote adventure is as easy as stopping by the closest convenience store. And here's something you can do to save you time and stress. You could choose to buy your basic toiletries at a Japanese convenience store instead of packing them with you. That way, you could stop worrying about the liquids rules at airport security. Of course, this won't work if you use any specialized products as they won't be available at a convenience store. Number eight, install Google Translate. Everyone knows Google Translate can horribly transform an innocent foreign phrase into an incomprehensible mess but we're not here for that. We're interested in the scanning feature of the app. You see, eateries such as ramen shops usually ask their customers to pay at a machine first before ordering. The machine is similar to a vending machine. You deposit your money, search for the item you want, press the button, and get it. Except in this case, you'll get a slip that you'll give to the shopkeeper, letting them know that you've ordered. It minimizes confusion for both you and the shop owner. The problem with this is that the selection buttons are written in Japanese. Though the Japanese are visual people, photos and illustrations are usually either too small or too vague to accurately tell you what it is. If you have Google Translate installed and use its scanning function, it'll only take you a few seconds to find out whether that miso ramen you're about to order is super spicy or not. Number 9. Carry your sanitizer and towels. Cleaning your hands won't be a problem if you're staying in a major city. Public restrooms will have a hand-washing facility, though likely without a way to dry your hands. If you want to avoid drying your hands on your clothes, carry some sort of hand towel with you. However, hand-washing facilities decrease as you further venture away from the city. Public conveniences do still exist, but they're few and far between. That's why you want to carry your hand sanitizer so you can disinfect your hands whenever you need it. Don't worry, the Japanese love cleanliness. They won't look at you weirdly if you choose to clean your hands while waiting for the next bus. Number 10, be prepared to be inundated with plastic bags. Japan loves their plastic bags way too much. You could buy a single bottle of water from a 7-Eleven and they'll still put it in a plastic bag for you. Of course, you could always decline by saying, Deja bo desu, 
it's all right. Or, kiku desu, no thank you. But if you're too anxious or just a tad slow in speaking up, your item is getting bagged. So what do you do with this overabundance of plastic bags? You could use them as a trash bag as you walk around. There are public garbage bins in Japan, of course, but they become more sparse the further you go. Use one of your plastic bags in the meantime to hold your trash until you can find a bin later. And if you simply have way too many plastic bags with you, see if any of the larger department stores can collect the bags for recycling. Hopefully, with these tips, you'll feel a little less stressed when preparing for your trip to Japan. Can you think of other tips and hacks we haven't mentioned in the video? Which tip was your favorite? Comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love this other video from our channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more content like this. See you soon, and until then, bon voyage!